and welcome to AF Math and Engineering. If you're enjoying our channel, hit the subscribe button and the like button down below as we're always releasing new content. Enjoy! Hello everybody, this is Avi from AF Math and today we're going to discuss how to write a successful resume. And this is a topic that students uh, graduating seem to be having a bit of trouble with. So I'm hoping to kind of break it down, give you a nice example or two and see where we can get from there. So what is a resume? A resume is a one-page marketing tool that promotes your unique set of skills. A resume will not get you a job. It is designed to get you the interview. And that's why I always say that you don't need more than a one-page resume because everything you want to say, you'll say the interview. And a resume is not a cover letter. And if you don't know what a cover letter is, it's a document that is usually used in North America and usually requested. And we'll do a video about cover letters with examples following up on this video. So what are the resume essentials? As I said before, the one page rule, and that's in my opinion the most important rule that you can get from this uh, YouTube video, is to keep your resume as one page. I know you have a lot to say, I know you accomplished a lot in your life, but keep it to one page, uh, go to the interview and then say everything you want. People usually don't read the second page, and it's not comfortable to go to job fairs and start giving up two pages resume. So keep it short at one page. Another thing a resume should follow a chronological order. And what do I say by that? I'll specify in the next slide, but there is an order that is a simple order and if you follow it, you should be good. The next thing is that many organizations use a resume scanner. So your resume, uh, is sent to a software and the software works on specific keywords and if you don't have the keyword they're looking for then the software will automatically disqualify your resume so keyword is something that we're going to also discuss later two last points unless requested always save the file as a pdf why because you don't want to look like an amateur and the last thing is don't give up you only need one resume to get you one job and to be happy. And everybody sends a thousand resumes. Everybody spent a lot of time finding a job. It's a project. It's not something that you just, unless you know you know somebody or you're an amazing student, usually you spend a good amount of time sending resumes, going to interviews, so don't give up. So let's go back to the chron chronological order that I was discussing before. And this is, in my opinion, how it should be done in uh, North America, and that's the standard. First, there is no need for a color. You can keep it as black and white, simple. Above, your name, your LinkedIn, if you don't have a LinkedIn, it's time to open a LinkedIn, it's 2019. Your cell phone and your email address. Next is the objective. Some people like to put it, some people don't like to put it. As I'm looking at a position as blah, blah, blah. So it's an optional. But this is how the resume should be built. First, your professional proficiencies. And we'll have an example on that later. Second, your professional experience. Followed by education. And ending with leadership and activities. Each one of these points should have bullet points to follow. And we'll do an example that will make everything look more easy to understand. So here's our example. I just went on a random uh, search in websites and found this uh, random job for a civil engineer graduate. Uh, so this is a company, I deleted the name of the company, who is currently looking, currently seeking a civil engineering in the road construction industry. A successful candidate will possess the following. Highly effective planning and organization, effective communication skills, ability to work, demonstrate ability to work unsupervised, and on and on and on. Take a minute, pause the video, and read everything that they are asking, and understand that those will be the keywords that we will need to find. Pretty standard uh, request. Okay, so moving on to the example. And 
Here is our example, as you can see it's one page, I just took it a bit bigger so it will look good. And the details in blue is things that you can delete, I just wanted to show you the keywords that I've used. Okay, so this is uh, what we spoke about before. The objective as a position as a civil engineer. Regarding the professional proficiencies. So the first recommendation uh, that they asked for was a highly effective planning and organizational skills. So I wrote plan, schedule and coordinate complex details. The second was effective communication skills. So I wrote excellent organizational relationship building and interpersonal skills. As you can see, I'm kind of taking what they ask for and used it in my own words, but I'm answering to all of their demands. Uh, the next one was ability to work in a team environment, also demonstrate ability to work unsupervised. So as you can see, I worked, work well independently and with little oversight as well as part of a team. The next, possess a valid driving license, and this is a trap that usually a lot of people uh, fall in the software because the request is a driving license but people just don't write that they have a driving license because it's obvious and then the software automatically disqualifies them and they lose the job over something stupid make sure that if they requested a valid driving license you're right possess a valid driving license Next, they ask for contract administration skills. So I wrote proficiency in writing and analyzing technical reports, including contracts, correspondence, and memos. So as you can see, I gave them all of the requirements and expanded a bit more, okay? A good trick is always to take the word and use like synonyms, and you get like different synonyms for every word and, you know, play with it a bit. And always, if you have space, add two or three more things that they could be interested in. For example, strong Microsoft Office skills, always good. Strong multitasking skills, languages, if you're living in Canada and you speak French, and on and on, as long as you have space. Now going to the professional experience. So even if you have no professional experience, and you worked in a store, okay, like a small bookstore, write it, okay? You can find a way to put it in the context of what they request. And at the end, it shows that you did something in your life. Okay, it's not connected to construction, but still you actually worked a day in your life in something, okay? So I wrote here, for example, store warehouse associate, which is a nice name for a guy that worked in a store. <laughs> the location where it was and the years that I worked with if it's until now you just write present instead of uh, 2018 or 19 and then I added some qualities provide high quality customer service which is if you remember they ask for communicate with customer representative you should actually color it in blue and here it looks much nicer in blue also, I wrote installed a sense of comfort and calm with shoppers and participated in health and safety programs. So it's something, okay? It's not a lot and it's nice words, but it's still something. Next, we move on to education. Uh, if you're applying for an engineering degree, so you need your Bachelor of Engineering, you need to put the name of your degree first, then the university that you achieved it from, or the YouTube university here, and the years that you studied. If you're still in school, again, you can still write present here or going to graduate in 2020. And relative coursework is a nice place that you can, again, put keywords in the context. So I took three courses that I did. And you can see in project management, you have project estimating, tendering, and bidding, which is something that they ask for. In construction field practices, I wrote basic site coordination and then working with the building code, the health and safety, as you see. And I had space, so I added one more thing, traffic operation and management, where I learned travel demand modeling and transit, transit service planning. And it looks good. It looks like you're not ju just trying to answer their question, but you're also showing that you know what you're talking about and adding a little bit of context. The last thing, and that's also really important, is the leadership and activities. And if you haven't volunteered for anything during your uh, academic time, well, now is the time to start. 
The good news is that it doesn't have to be like a full year. It could be a simple competition. Like for example, the Popsicle Bridge competition uh, that they do in Canadian universities every year. It's like a one day competition plus two weeks to kind of arrange everything and that's it. You can add it to your resume and say you provided technical assistance to other construction members and perform st stress analysis and calculation. Okay. Um, or another program of a new students campus introduction. Okay, it doesn't have to be anything big or I don't know volunteer for two years. If you did it, amazing. But if you haven't, you need to put it. You need to show that you did something else other than just going to classes, coming back from classes. And employers love to see that. So this is definitely another part that you always need to add to your resume. And that's it. I see the video is a bit long. I'll continue with a different example in the next video. So stay with us.